Hello and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cammy Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. Iona, it's good to be back with a little Q&A. We had Kaz on last week. I know, In your place. He, he played it very well, right enough. He, he did the whole, me, Iona Murray. <laughs> very, very, very well. But of course, everybody really wants Kaz back, but he wasn't available. <laughs> so we've got, <laughs> we've, got, we've got Iona here <laughs> instead. Thanks as always to our sponsors, Crystalix and... Treasure, Animax Treasure, boluses, not Treasure bolus. No, no, <laughs> we're not Although tracing that is That is a wee funny, I'm going to have to speak to the team at Animax, see if they can come up with a little funny off the back of Iona's uh, <laughs> faux pas. <laughs> faux pas? Faux pas. Uh, last week when we were speaking with Brendan, that was very, very good. Uh, have we got some questions? We do have questions. To talk about this week. Is there yes. anything you want to tell me about your week? Is there anything you want to tell me, Iona? <laughs> I, I, I do that with Marissa quite a lot, and she, you always see the, the sheer panic in her face. And it, you think of anything wrong you've ever done? You know, you know she's been up to no good. So, <laughs> is there anything you want to tell me? Um, no, nothing in particular. That's great. Okay. <laughs> well, with regards to Chris Lux Dynamax, we're going to be hearing a bit more about them in this podcast later on. Thanks for the continued support. Let's have a quick. In fact, before we have a question, really funny thing that happened this week. So. Iona does all the emails for the sheep game and for everything basically, and uh, I, I happen to to, <laughs> to, to I, I look I, I kind of glance at them as they come in just in case um, there's anyone I know messaging or whatever. And there was one I picked up the thread <laughs> that someone had sent in a question <laughs> to the podcast and signed it off as anon a n o n right okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Iona had replied back saying hi Anon and then this whole spiel from Iona and the poor person that has I can't tell you their name of course because you know what Anon means the poor person's replied back saying eh, actually my name isn't Anon I just wanted to is that locked? I'm on in oh here we go Jockey come on in here <laughs> Come on, Jock, you're going to be in the podcast. <laughs> ah, Jockey! Hello. Who's that? Anna. Iona. Yeah. yeah, you're a clever boy, and Mum's here too. Hello. Jock, we're doing a, doing a podcast just now. Do you want to say yeah. hi, sheep fans? Hey, yeah, but it's okay, it's just a wee cunny. It's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I, I knew you were going to come, so I thought you're licking that. You <laughs> cheeky. I knew you were going to. It was fine. I said, it'll, be, it'll be good fun, Jock, coming in and being all happy. Jock, we're on the podcast just now. Is there anything you want to say? So for anyone listening to the audio, not watching the YouTube, Jock is here now acting all shy. Have you been to the market today, Jock? Yeah. And did you sell some of Mum's lambs? Yeah. And did you get lots of money for them? Anna. Did Iona get lots of money? Yes, please. Anna. Yes, Iona. Yeah. And so Jock, so Jock and Lizzie and Angus have been to market today. Lizzie, come on round. Come on. Come on round, see us. Okay, Lizzie's been all shy, you know what she's like. Uh, so Lizzie has been to market, you sold some store lambs today. 22. T- ter- basically, they're lambs that were too lame to go the last time. Yeah, they weren't fit. But how much did you sell them for, Lizzie? 123 pounds they went for today. Wow. Yeah, no, that's that's for the lame ones. Anyway, they were the horrible lambs we didn't take. And it's basically added 23 pounds onto their value just by keeping them a bit longer. And Jock's coming down here to touch some things. So there we go. Store lamb trade is on fire. There were 22, 22 lambs and they sold them in seven different lots. So that tells you how bad they were. So it was like three, three <laughs> at a time. Because <laughs> they were so bad. But they still averaged £123. Okay, yeah. So, Jock, we're just asking. Iona's got some questions for us. What question? Do we have a question? I, I'll finish her anon story just uh, in, in a, wee, a wee while. I've got a question. Jock, we're going to get a question here. Yay. Yeah. Yay. We'll start off with a light-hearted one, Jock. Are you ready? Here's a question from Iona. If everyone stopped sneezing, how oh. long do you think it would take before you realise no one sneezed anymore? I thought that was genius. Yeah, how long, so if everyone stopped sneezing, how long before you notice nobody sneezed anymore? Yeah. Never. Oh, surely. I don't think I would notice. D- notice yourself. I think you would. I... I personally, I personally love a sneeze. Do you? I do love a sneeze. Do you like a sneeze? What do you do? I'm is he a, a big sneezer? A big thing of it, like no, because uh, I enjoy it so much. 
Do you know what I mean? It's like I don't want to restrict myself. I don't want to do a. You know, some folk do that. Or that, yeah, we. Aye. Oh, I'm a proper like. Yeah. 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 But like it's they say it's like a mini orgasm in your nose. I don't think so. I feel. I, I mean, I don't. It's pretty close. A sneeze is incredible. How good do you feel when you sneeze? Not that great. No. No, I'm. Don't but think do you ever just let it go and just? No, maybe maybe I'm holding myself back. Aye, yeah, that I think that is a big thing. Lizzie's quite a quiet sneezer. But it might be a self conscious thing with Lizzie. Is that right? <laughs> I just let it go. <laughs> what, loud sneezing? No, nah, yeah, we'd, we don't want too much coughing of that as well. So Jock has just stepped outside the room for anyone listening to audio, but he will be back, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my thoughts are that you would never... Okay. You'd never realise that folk stop sneezing. I think it would take a while. I'm going to go for 18 months. When did you last sneeze? Well, I don't know. Exactly, because you don't even acknowledge it. So you, would, you wouldn't you would know if folk stop sneezing. God, we get to the heart of the real things in farming <laughs> here, don't we? Right, okay. Would you like a farmery <laughs> one? <laughs> Do you have any farmery ones? Yes. Okay, let's hear a farmery question. Crystalix Extra High Energy Feed Blocks have been providing high energy supplementation to ewes, lambs and rams in the UK since 1978. Packed full of protein, vitamins, minerals and trace elements, Crystalix Extra High Energy has been proven to increase live lamb numbers and improve lamb daily live weight gain at a cost of only 4 to 7 pence per ewe per day. To view the full Crystalix range and find your nearest stockist, visit crystalix-global.com. So they would like to know well, about while Jock's out. Let me just finish that anon <laughs> story. So yeah, Iona basically replied back thinking their name was anon, and they said actually my name isn't anon. Uh, I just said that because I want to be anonymous. My name's actually X, and I just was burst out laughing. I read it when I read it because it's like oh, Iona, you're like in some some regards you're so clever, but in other ways it's like what a sheltered life you've li- I know, lived. No, it's embarrassing. Um, so. Uh, I have a, a very good story about that, actually, and a similar kind of thing. Oh. When I first joined the police, I, uh, obviously, as a probationer, you had a tutor constable, and you used to get a thing called a crime report, which you still get, but in a different format now, and it would basically be, if there was a crime phone to the call centre that wasn't urgent, they would take the details, like a minor theft or a vandalism or something, and you would be allocated to investigate. Right, okay. So I got allocated this one this time, and there was forensic evidence on it. And it used to be if there was, there maybe wasn't forensic evidence, rather there was forensic samples taken, but it would fill in the suspect box for some reason with uh, CHU remote, okay. which is call handling unit remote, would be in where the suspect was, right? Right, okay. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get ripped to shreds for this. So I read this, right? I read this and I turns to my, I turns to my tutor cop and I says to him, hey, I've got a suspect on this CR. Um, how would I go about finding him? And he says, all right, okay, what's, well, what's his name? We could look him up. And I says, uh, <laughs> I, says I, th- I think it might be a Chinese guy. <laughs> this is true. And I, I don't think this is racist. It was just naivety. Uh, I think it might be a Chinese guy. I think it's, I said, I think it's Chu Remote. <laughs> I, I think I think I think his name's Chu Ramote, <laughs> and I just got. It was straight away. I was like, "What?" I was like, "Let me see that." He's like, "That's call handling unit remote, you clown." <laughs> and of course, he told everyone about it. That's so funny. Uh, so I'm like, "Hi, who's this Chu Ramote?" <laughs> I think like, it's for me. It's the Ramote. I know. I know. I know. I didn't just read it. Like, I know. Why wouldn't I just read it like remote? I don't know. I just I just assumed it was a foreign name and added a wee bit of a wee bit of embellishment uh-huh. on it. Chew remote. So Chew, if you're out there, <laughs> I'm coming for you. See, um, just thought of another wee riddle quickly. Um, do you know how you can spell candy only using two letters? Sorry for anyone listening to me drinking there on the podcast. <laughs> how do you spell candy with only with? How only can you spell two. candy with only using two letters? Well, obviously, it's not that easy so tell me c and y okay is that would that be class i suppose it as a riddle yeah okay sorry right no right. no no it's good Let's i should have worked that out i know yeah i feel like you're tired today yeah just every day eh? yeah just, yeah scanning season 
It's okay, we'll get through this, barely. <laughs> okay, but, right, let, let's... Is let's... this a farming question? Here we go. Yes. Okay, so this is from a farmer in America, central Montana, um, and she is wondering if you could explain to her sheep tail docking. It seems to her all sheep around where she lives and other places in the US dock the tails. They also have small tails, which I'm guessing is a breed thing. But watching your sheep, I see, see there are some with great big wide and long tails and some with shorter tails. Just Is it just different breeds? Do some get docked? Blah, blah, blah. What are the, what are the reasons? It's an interesting question and a slightly controversial subject mm -hmm. for various reasons. One, and, and it's different. America, they have a thing which is like 4-H, the 4-H shows, which is like people will pay. You know, I know we talk about Double Diamond at 300,000 uh, guineas or 350,000 guineas, but people mm -hmm. will pay up to like, like six figures for a weather lamb. Why? To show it. What? Yeah, there's some crazy, crazy things, and they like they shave it like totally bare, like so it's just like, and then the tail is the tail is totally off. There's not even like you know we 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 leave a little bit of cover. Mm -hmm. The tail is like totally gone. What? What? For, and they leave for, the legs all hairy. Is this all just for aesthetic? Yeah, it's purposes. for shows for these because the prize money's like, if I'm led to believe, like if you win these like shows with these weather lambs, these four eight shows as they're called, like it's like twenty thousand dollars. What? Yeah, yeah, for, for a lamb class. Crazy, crazy stuff, and and people are paying six figures for a for weather lambs, okay. castrated males. That is for anyone wondering what I'm talking about. What crazy? We need yeah, so they've got no they've got no purpose. Yeah, yeah, you can't breed with them. Like they're castrate, castrated what? males. And yeah, they're basically in this country you would they would go in the food chain, mm -hmm. but they're paying crazy isn't it? Yeah, that is. It is insane. mental, and we need to find out more about that because I love. Yeah. I'd love to get somebody on the podcast to talk about that. Myself and Alan Blackwood are actually coming to America in September. I can't remember the date. Is it written up there? Yes, twenty third. Twenty third of September. We're we're going to Michigan, uh, to the the North American Hill Sheep Show, uh, and Alan's going to be judging the Blackies. I'm just going to be mingling and having fun, and yeah, we'll we'll maybe find out more about these. Uh, crazy crazy sheep but back to the tail, actual tail docking so controversial for a few reasons obviously it causes discomfort to the lamb uh, doing the job uh, and there's various arguments countries like Norway you're not allowed to do it okay okay there's no castration in Norway works absolutely fine C no castration no castration at all no, no ringing of tails and no ringing of testicles really no nothing at all not allowed and it works fine there so do they go hand in hand? <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of a good way to make that an innuendo, but it doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, and what, what do you mean hand in hand? Doing tails and balls? Yeah. Kind of, kind of. Um, you could argue one is more painful than the other, but yeah, it's a similar kind of thing. If you're banning one, you but may as well why, ban the other. But why are they doing the tails? What is the actual purpose? No, and that is a good point. Like People in this country would argue so much that, oh, you have to castrate the tails... Uh, and they would say it's because of fly strike, etc. Uh, but then I would flip that and say to them, "Well, how do the blacky guys manage it? Because mm -hmm. they don't take any tails off, no. and they've got more. They're, they're actually woollier than yeah. than any other breed. But but is it because maybe blackies aren't so much out on lush grass? But they are now. They are. That's the thing. It was fine when they're out. They have the long tail for being on the hill, mm -hmm. so they can turn their back to the wind and they're and they're sheltered. You know yeah. that is the point of the long tail. But I mean. There's actually thousands of blackies that are in, in by parks all summer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, even Alan won't mind me saying, he's got plenty of, of blackies that are in, in by parks. We we shear his sheep. Mm -hmm. No bother with fly strike. No. Because they, they click. Yeah. You click the sheep. Dad started. It doesn't matter how long the tail is. Yeah. You know what? That's the reality. So we thought we'd go hard on dags and fly strike. That's why we do the tails. Yes, it helps. Mm -hmm. It definitely helps. But we do have a product that solves the problem without mm -hmm. taking the tail off. That is, if I'm playing devils, the main reason, and I'll be perfectly honest, a, a Texel cross lamb with a long tail looks horrible. Mm -hmm. It looks absolutely terrible, and like it just, it just doesn't look nice. It, so there's a there's a big benefit in that regard. You know, mm -hmm. yes, you you have less bother with fly strike. Okay. Less bother with dags. 
so the lamb's cleaner but is it enough to justify like you know does it enough to win the argument we could say well the blackie boys don't take the tails off how yeah. do they manage do you know do you know mm -hmm, what i mean mm -hmm. so it's a tricky one the test school job is a totally different game altogether see if they, if they were to ban and there's no point in banning tails and not uh, sorry there's no point in banning tails but still having tesco castration because you'd argue the tesco's is much mm -hmm. more well it is much more painful the tail hardly bothers a lamb you know you do a wee yeah. lamb it gives it a wee shake and then it's fine mm -hmm. you know there isn't okay there will be some discomfort some pain but it's, it's minimal the tesco's is a different thing altogether it's going to be slightly more painful of course mm -hmm. uh, which is why you do them so young under seven days in the uk but the idea is that you do them under seven days and that you know, it's a lot less pain than, mm -hmm. it, than than it could be as the testicles develop and grow. Yeah. Um, and, and if you didn't castrate the males, it would be a shambles because Norway get away with it because when the lambs start to mature, they mm -hmm. all come inside for the winter. It's easy to put them in separate, separate pens. Yeah. Whereas here, all of a sudden you're going to need a separate field for tup lambs, a separate field for ewe lambs, a separate field for your breeding ewes. And of course... They're going to get out you're going to get out because if a tup lamb knows there's a female mm -hmm. you, I mean you're going to need it deer fenced mm -hmm. to keep them in not just that they then start fighting with each other yes. you know they'll start you know you'll end up with dead dead lambs because they're all fighting and and, and uh, doing things that rams do mm -hmm. it, it, it would just be a shambles so yeah. like I, I really think we have to keep I really think it would cause major issues in this country if they, if they did away with the castration of the testicles mm -hmm. and it would be absolutely pointless to keep the castration of the testicles and and, and uh, say stop the castration of the tails, which is you know far less of a, a discomfort for the lambs, albeit I was playing devil advocate. You could argue the tails aren't that important to be taken off, mm -hmm. um, but you know testicles are in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Most foragers don't supply sheep and cattle with enough cobalt, copper, iodine and selenium, critical to digestion, immunity, reproduction and growth. When it comes to supplementation, there's a danger of under or oversupply. But when bolusing with Animax Traceshow, you can be sure every animal has enough for up to six months in one single application. Animax. Giving what it takes. Um, this person would like to know how we shop for our food. As a farmer's wife, she feels pressured into ensuring what she buys for her family is from a sustainable source, supporting local businesses, etc. But the convenience of the supermarket delivery sometimes slips in. Are you supporters of local businesses? Does all of your meat come from a butcher? Great question. Uh, and actually very relevant to... I got a row this week on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Because we put Lizzie made pancakes for dinner. And mm -hmm. we put a picture up and we had Lurpak on display. Disgraceful. We actually spoke about this in the podcast with Brendan there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, very relevant question. I can't remember what Lizzie said when I bought it. Something along the lines of, well, do the shopping yourself then. And I, <laughs> I immediately, <laughs> immediately backed down and apologised and said, you know, I love Lurpak. Uh, and of course, Lurpak's good. Uh, all our meat, yeah, we are very, very... Um, fussy mm -hmm. with meat and eggs everything for a start if it can be no i say this all the time all british meat we are very patriotic everything scottish if it can be mm -hmm. but at the very least it'll be british like yep. lizzie would never buy anything that that wasn't british meat mm -hmm. you know just wouldn't happen and she is you know things like chicken that a lot of people get caught out on you know they'll buy dutch chicken or whatever which again dutch chicken will be absolutely 100 percent like Netherlands are a very advanced nation, same as us. Their mm. animal welfare will be pretty high. I have no doubt that their, ch yeah. their chicken's 100%. But Lizzie, being from a, f a, a farm where they rear really high-end, free-range chicken, like yeah. she always buys the most expensive chicken because mm -hmm. she she is a big believer. And I think she's quite right. The taste is night and day. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the quality that they produce yeah. down in Devon on that free-range birds with loads of exercise and the best of feeding, organic feeding, is night and day compared to the mm -hmm. the cheaper type of, of meat chickens you get so yeah she always buys expensive chicken with regards to meat we actually get most of our beef i just get some from actually i was over nile and i got some from the the i'm going to pronounce this wrong the mo mill fold originally from iona oh yeah uh, uh andrew prentice now over in aaron so we just got some some meat from him but actually most of our beef that we 
eat. Mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of mince, Lizzie does buy a lot of uh, Scottish mince from Aldi's or Lidl's. Mm -hmm. But most of the good better cuts, or all the better cuts of beef we eat, come from actually a place called Clan Finn, which do grass only fed belted Galloways. And they're in Ayrshire, they're in Golston. Fantastic uh, couple that get into farming later in life and mm -hmm. they're doing things really, really high end. They also so do Herdwick Lamb. Golston. Clan Finn. Yeah, Clan Finn Farm. Check them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, this is their, their shout out because we, if you're local in Ayrshire or whatever, the meat is absolutely different. Like, I tremendous. You can tell the difference. Oh, I mean, this this is, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's really, really good. We love it. I feel like I, I sympathise with this lady because I feel like there is a lot of pressure and I think now we know what the right thing to do but sometimes convenience comes in like I feel like ideally all I would be eating is locally produced seasonal food mm -hmm. but to do that is really hard yeah but like when you go to buy meat what kind of meat are yeah you no meat is fine yeah but I'm probably more like fruits and vegetables and things like I know basically everything is being imported like I bet you say that but like generally speaking I think even with the supermarkets if it's if it's seasonal in the UK, it'll be on the shelves. Mm -hmm. Albeit we did have the issue with the black currants. Um, no, sorry, the blueberries uh, being yeah. imp imported from Chile rather than using the ones here yeah. because it's cheaper. Right, which That's is yeah, that was ridiculous. But generally speaking, I think you know your veggies if they're seasonable, seasonal, and, and available, there will be some on offer on the shelves, and you'll mm -hmm. just always pick the British option. Yeah. And I would hope anyone in their own country would pick their own country's produce because mm -hmm. you have to you have to buy it local, mm -hmm. and it, it has to be the best product. You know, it's not doing the travelling, and British agriculture is like right at the forefront. Like we are, we do lead the way. Like in my opinion, like the way we do things is. I mean, just look at the sheep job. Like, you must. All right, this time of year, a lot of lambs will be getting supplementary feeding. Like a lot of lambs will be on hoppers to get finished at this time of year. But maybe you should just quickly that sentence on yeah, hoppers, hoppers to get so, finished. So, so uh, they'll be getting like concentrate feed. You know, they'll be getting um, lamb pellets or barley or, or something like that to mm. finish them off. But, you know, a good solid 80% of the lamb in this country will be finished just on grass. Mm -hmm. I just made that figure up, but it'll be something like that. You know, sh lamb is just this incredible meat that's hardly changed. You know, the way we do things is hardly ch It's changed massively, but in other ways it hasn't. Mm -hmm. The sheep go out and graze the hills. We bring them in, we put them to a nice winter, and they go to market off the grass. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. Can't get better than that. And all the lamb we eat is our own. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So how do you do that? Uh, James Nisbet, who was on the podcast before, mm -hmm. his dad does them for me. So, right, okay. Uh, now, do not... Do not mention, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, do not message Jimmy Nisbet asking him to do your lambs for you. He does it as a <laughs> as a, a favour. Yeah, so. But you don't buy the rest of your meat from him? No, good point. But I get it from Clan Finn, you know, I would buy food. Jimmy does loads yeah. of farmers. Loads. Does your dad get it from him? No? no. Oh, terrible. You know. uh, but he does, he does loads of farmers. Yeah. Uh, Margot that was in gets, mm -hmm. gets a parcel, they get a parcel off him like yeah. every week or every fortnight. Um, best of gear so no I go to Clan Finn and then we get uh, lamb is all our own mm -hmm. chicken Lizzie buys the, the, the expensive stuff but we're privileged that we can do that yeah, I know I know and that's the other like see buying local good quality meat mm -hmm. like folks say oh you buy local buy this it's a luxury it's an absolute privilege like we're privileged to do it I would I would say to anyone listen that really what you should be doing is buy cheapest you know if you're if you're hard up don't worry about where the food comes from just feed the family. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If, if you need to buy chicken from Thailand, buy the chicken from Thailand. Don't worry about folk going, you know, don't worry about these Facebook campaigns. Buy local, buy this, support support British farming and that. Yes, that's great. And if you're in a privileged position like Iona and I, mm -hmm. and you can do that, then do it. But, like, don't be doing it when you're hard up. No. Do it as it's cheap a, as you yeah. can. That's what I think. Yeah. And I at the end of the that. day, chicken from Thailand will have the same protein. Mm -hmm. as chicken for here okay the welfare standards might not be the same we've discussed this before yep but the end goal of feeding your family with some health healthy meat is the same yeah that's my thoughts on it yep right i don't know if we've got time for another so just, question i just basically went on about how rich you know i'm like oh man i'll buy all the best meat no bother and then i think we saved it yeah no definitely. look after us and i really believe in that you know like it's like so it's, it's like folk that say buy like i've really gone about buying wool Mm -hmm. Because that's for yeah. the absolute privilege. Absolutely, a hundred quid a jumper. 
That's for the absolute privilege. And if you can buy Will, buy Will. Brilliant, Will, yeah. But don't feel you have to. What is on this week? Uh, this week's scanning starting to ease off a little bit. I'm going to do some more on my own tomorrow as well as moving some sheep around because mm. lambing is six weeks away. It's, it's mad. When, so when do you start lambing? 7th of April. 7th. That's always the date in my head for my dad starting. Is that 7th of April. As well? I think he might be a wee bit earlier now. But aye, it's all, always aye. used to be 7th. I think now with the AI ones, they go. They start in the first. Jockey! Daddy. Come on and see me. Right, there's Jock back. Right, we'll wrap this up then, folks. Thanks very much for listening to this one. I've I've been Cami. I've been Iona. And he's been Jock. And Cammy. we're both fed, <laughs> fed by, by farmers. farmers. Cami. <laughs> <laughs>